Deep in the western highlands of Guatemala, near the city of Quetzaltenango, stands one of the world's most active volcanic systems. Santiaguito Volcano, located at coordinates 14 degrees 47 and 90 degrees 88 feet W, has been erupting almost continuously for over a century, making it one of the planet's most persistent and fascinating geological features. This remarkable lava dome complex erupts with such regularity that local residents can practically tell time by its explosions, which occur every 40 minutes to 3 hours throughout every single day. Standing at approximately 2,500 meters above sea level, Santiaguito isn't just any ordinary volcano, it's actually a collection of four separate lava domes that grew from the massive crater left behind by one of the 20th century's most devastating volcanic eruptions. The story of Santiaguito begins with catastrophe. On October 25, 1902, its parent volcano, Santa Maria, exploded in one of the three largest eruptions of the 20th century, comparable in power to Mount Pinatubo in 1991. This massive blast killed at least 5,000 people, though the actual number was likely much higher, and sent ash as far as San Francisco, California, over 2,500 miles away. The eruption tore a gaping crater nearly half a mile wide in Santa Maria's southern flank, and for the next 20 years, the mountain remained dormant, as if gathering strength for what would come next. Then, in 1922, new seismic activity announced the birth of something extraordinary, a new volcanic system that would become known as Santiaguito, which means Little Saint James in Spanish. What makes Santiaguito truly unique isn't just its regular eruptions, but its complex structure. The volcanic complex consists of four distinct lava domes, each with its own personality and history El Brujo, El Monje, La Mitad, and El Caliente. These names reflect the character that early observers saw in each dome. El Brujo means the wizard, El Monje translates to the monk, La Mitad means the half, and El Caliente is simply the hot one. El Caliente is currently the star of the show. It's the youngest and most active of the four domes, responsible for the spectacular displays that draw scientists and adventurous visitors from around the world. The older domes to the west, El Brujo, El Monje, and La Mitad, have become covered in lush vegetation creating a striking contrast with the bare, ash-covered slopes of the active El Caliente Dome. When Santiaguito first began forming in 1922, it grew incredibly fast. Within just three years, the original dome had reached a volume of 0.2 cubic kilometers. Today, after more than a century of nearly continuous activity, the complex has erupted over one cubic kilometer of lava, that's enough material to bury Manhattan under 30 feet of volcanic rock. The growth hasn't been steady, though. Scientists have identified a cyclical pattern in Santiaguito's activity, with periods of high extrusion rates lasting three to five years, followed by longer periods of lower activity. Since 1960, blocked lava flows have become more important than the dome building activity that dominated earlier periods. What exactly happens during a Santiaguito eruption? The process begins deep underground, where magma and gas steadily rise from within the Earth's crust. Before an explosion, the vent at the top of the dome becomes sealed, trapping hot gases and magma below. As the gas builds up, pressure increases until it finally tears through the dome's sealed vent, releasing the pent-up gases and sending magma and loose rocks skyward. What makes Santiaguito's eruptions particularly fascinating is their distinctive appearance. When an eruption begins, ash is pushed out of the dome in a perfect ring shape from circular crack systems. This creates a spectacular visual that photographers and scientists find both beautiful and scientifically valuable. Most eruptions produce ash plumes that reach heights of nearly 1,640 feet above the dome, though some can be much larger. Recent activity has included daily explosions that generate gas and ash plumes rising 700 to 900 meters above the summit, with winds typically carrying the ash northwest, west, and southwest. While Santiaguito's regular eruptions might seem predictable and manageable, this volcano has a deadly side. On November 2, 1929, at 9.30 p.m. local time, a massive dome collapse sent pyroclastic flows racing down the valleys for more than 10 kilometers, devastating at least 15 square kilometers and killing between 3,000 and 5,000 people. The collapse involved over 15 million cubic meters of material and created intense hot pyroclastic surges that eyewitnesses described as a major cause of deaths. 
What made this disaster particularly tragic was that no unusual warning signs were noticed by local residents before the collapse occurred. The 350-meter high Dacity dome that had been growing peacefully since 1922 simply gave way without warning, demonstrating that even well-studied volcanoes can surprise us. This event wasn't isolated. Pyroclastic flows have occurred as recently as 2001, and the ongoing dome growth continues to produce block avalanches that can travel down the flanks. Recent activity has included active lava flows, frequent explosions, ash plumes, and ashfall affecting nearby communities. The land around Santiaguito has been used for agriculture for centuries, especially coffee plantations, which puts people living and working there in continual danger. The towns of El Palma and San Felipe, located directly south of the domes, along with the larger city of Quetzaltenango to the north of Santa Maria, regularly deal with volcanic hazards. During recent months, ashfall has been reported in communities including Monte Claro to the south, San Marcos 8 km southwest, and Loma Linda Palajunoj 7 km southwest of the volcano. Lajas, volcanic mudflows, regularly descend rivers like the Tambor, carrying sediment, tree trunks, branches, and volcanic blocks up to 1 meter in diameter. These lahars are often hot and carry the distinctive sulfur smell of volcanic gases. Santiaguito's location is no accident. The volcano sits along the Central American volcanic arc, formed by the subduction of the Cocos Plate under the Caribbean Plate. This process creates the perfect conditions for the type of explosive volcanism we see throughout Guatemala and much of Central America. The magma that feeds Santiaguito is made primarily of andesite and dacite, highly viscous types of lava typical of volcanism in subduction zones. This thick, sticky lava is so viscous that it poses no immediate hazard when it's first erupted, but it creates the perfect conditions for dome building and eventual catastrophic collapses. Today, Santiaguito is one of the world's most closely watched volcanoes. Because of the high risk to people living nearby, the International Association of Volcanology and Chemistry of the Earth's Interior designated Santa Maria and Santiaguito as a decade volcano, marking it as a target for particular study by volcanologists. Guatemala's INSIVUMEH, Instituto Nacional de Sismologia, Volcanologia, Meteorologia e Hydrologia, provides regular monitoring reports. Scientists use a combination of seismic monitoring, gas measurements, thermal imaging, and satellite observation to track the volcano's behavior. Despite decades of study, scientists still can't predict exactly when Santiaguito will erupt. While they can observe cycles in how the volcano inflates and deflates, the system isn't perfectly regular. What researchers do know for certain is that magma and gas are steadily rising from deep within the system, allowing the volcano to continuously show signs of life. Santiaguito is part of a much larger volcanic system that includes other major Guatemalan volcanoes like Tacanor, Siete Orejas, the Atitlan Volcanoes, Acatenango, Fuego, Agua, Pachaya, and Tecuamburo. Each of these volcanoes tells a different part of the story of how Central America's landscape has been shaped by millions of years of volcanic activity. While many visitors to Guatemala focus on the more famous Volcan Fuego or climb the challenging Santa Maria summit, Santiaguito offers its own unique experience. Most tourists view Santiaguito's eruptions from the safety of the Santa Maria summit or from designated viewpoints called miradors, though in the past, more adventurous travelers attempted to camp directly on the active volcanic system. However, after a particularly large eruption on June 17, 2016, Authorities have tightened restrictions and no longer allow people to hike close to the active volcanic areas. After more than a century of nearly continuous activity, Santiaguito continues to surprise and educate scientists. Its remarkable regularity, erupting multiple times per day for over 100 years, makes it unique among the world's volcanoes. Yet this same regularity masks a complex system that we're still working to understand. The volcano's ability to switch between different types of activity, from gentle dome building to explosive eruptions to devastating pyroclastic flows, demonstrates just how dynamic and unpredictable volcanic systems can be. Recent decades have seen everything from vertical pyroclastic eruptions that scatter bread crust blocks across the landscape to slow-moving lava flows that build up the dome structure. The constant activity at Santiaguito has shaped not just the physical landscape, 
but also the culture and daily life of the people who live nearby. In Quetzaltenango, volcanic eruptions have been so frequent that they've practically marked every passing hour of every day for nearly a century. This rhythmic geological heartbeat has become part of the regional identity. The areas south of Santa Maria are considerably affected by volcanic activity, with lahars being particularly problematic during the rainy season when heavy rainfall combines with loose volcanic deposits. These mud flows become especially large and frequent during periods of high volcanic activity at Santiaguito. What does the future hold for Santiaguito? One concern that scientists monitor closely is the possibility of a much larger collapse. The 1902 crater left the southern flank of Santa Maria oversteepened, and a large earthquake or major eruption from Santiaguito could potentially trigger a massive landslide that might cover up to 100 square kilometers. However, experts consider this unlikely in the short term. What seems much more certain is that Santiaguito will continue its remarkable pattern of regular eruptions. Having been active for 116 out of the past 126 years, with the current eruption period beginning in 1922 and showing no signs of stopping, this volcanic system appears to have found a sustainable rhythm. The story of Santiaguito is ultimately a story about the incredible power of geological processes and the resilience of both nature and human communities. For over a century, this remarkable volcanic system has been building itself grain by grain, eruption by eruption, creating new land even as it poses ongoing challenges for the people who share its landscape. As scientists continue to study and monitor Santiaguito, each eruption provides new data about how volcanic systems work, how they evolve over time, and how we can better predict and prepare for their behavior. In a world where volcanic hazards affect millions of people, the lessons learned from Guatemala's most persistent volcano continue to inform our understanding of these powerful natural forces that have shaped our planet for billions of years. The regular pulse of Santiaguito's eruptions serves as a reminder that beneath our feet, the Earth remains dynamic and ever-changing, following rhythms far older and more persistent than human civilization itself. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe and don't forget to explore more geological wonders on our channel.